The next few equations are going to be a little different, and here's the reason why. <clears throat> so I have 4 over x plus, whoops, plus 5 over 2 equals negative 11 over x. So notice on this one, first of all, there's an equal sign, but over here I have some kind of operation. I'm adding these two things together. So I can't cross multiply like I did on the others. I'm gonna to have to do one of two things. Either get a common denominator or just get rid of everything on the bottom of this fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by something that will get rid of the denominator. What would get rid of the denominator is multiplying by an x and a two. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So when I multiply here, I have 2x times 4 over x plus 2x times 5 halves equals 2x times negative 11 over x. And I'm going to show you a shortcut in just a moment. But watch what happens. The x's cancel, and I get 8. Here the 2's cancel, and I get 5x. And here the x's cancel, and I get negative 22. So by multiplying by the common denominator, I got rid of the entire fraction. So now I'm going to keep solving. Subtract 8 from both sides and divide by 5. Now I want to go back and check my answer and make sure it's okay. It's okay to have negative 6 on the bottom of a fraction, so this is a good answer. All right, here's the next one. So again, on this one, it looks complicated, but what I'm going to do to make it easier is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equal sign, so both sides of the equal sign, by something that would get rid of the fraction on both sides. So I'm going to take both sides times x minus 2. So when I multiply here, I would have x minus 2 times 5 over x minus 2 equals... 7 times x minus 2 plus 10 over x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I've just distributed. And in just a moment, I'm going to quit writing this step because watch what happens. The x minus 2 and the x minus 2 cancel. So that's what would have happened up here. And on the left side, I just get 5. Here, I'm taking the x minus 2 times the 7, so I get 7x minus 14. And then when I take this times this, the x minus 2 cancels, and I get plus 10. So now I don't have a fraction anymore. 5 equals 7x minus 4. 7x equals 9. So x equals 9 sevenths. And the only number I don't want x to be is 2, because 2 minus 2 would make 0 on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, let's do a couple more here. Well, I've got three more. This is example 7. 5x over x plus 1 equals 4 minus 5 over x plus 1. So I want to take both sides of this equation times something that will get rid of the denominator. And what would get rid of the denominator over here is an x plus 1. What would get rid of the denominator over here is an x plus 1. So I'm going to start by distributing. And on the left side, the x plus 1 and the x plus 1 will cancel, and I get 5x. Here, when I multiply the 4 times the x plus 1, it looks like this. And then when I do x plus 1 times this, these cancel, so I just have minus 5. I don't have a fraction anymore. 5x equals 4x plus 4 minus 5. 5x equals 4x minus 1. So x equals negative 1. The problem is, is when I put negative 1 in for x on the top, I get 0 on the bottom of this fraction. So since negative 1 is the only solution I got, and it's extraneous, this one would be no solution.
What I notice about this next problem from the very beginning is I see that this factors. So I'm going to start by factoring. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by something that will get rid of a denominator. Over here, to get rid of the denominator, I need x plus 1. So I've got to do that times both sides. Over here, I need x plus 1 and x minus 1. So I'm going to have to multiply this side times x minus 1. And if I do it to this side, I have to do it to the other side. So what happens is then when I distribute, the x plus 1's cancel here, but I still have x minus 1 times 4x plus 1 equals, when I distribute here, this whole thing cancels with that whole thing, and I'm left with 12. Plus, and when I distribute here, I have 3 times x plus 1, x minus 1. So on the left side, then, I have 4x squared plus x minus 4x minus 1 equals 12 plus, and I know that's x squared minus 1, so be 3x squared minus 3. Now I'm going to start putting things on the same side. I'm going to subtract 3x squared from both sides, and I get x squared. Here I have x and negative 4x. That's negative 3x. And over here I have 9. So I get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. That factors to x minus 5 times x plus 2. So my answers would be x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. But I better go back to the beginning and make sure both of those numbers work. So I'm going to try 5 first. 5 plus 1 would give me 6 on the bottom. That's fine. 5 squared is 25 minus 1 is 24. That's okay. Now I'm going to try negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. That's okay. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. So both of those solutions are good solutions.